Hi, I'm Michael Conway. I'm the founder of Means of Production. And in today's lesson, we're going to go over blogging best practices using Squarespace, uh, the website builder. And uh, it will basically review how to embed a blog for search engine optimization purposes, uh, attracting visitors back to your website. So let me start here. So we want to get into the back end of our website. We'll go to pages. We'll find our blog page. Click on the blog page. And then we want to add a new article by clicking the add post plus sign here at the top. Now I have my blog pre-written, so I'm going to grab that blog here, grab the content from that blog, starting with the title. So I'll grab the title. Paste it into the, uh, the title area. And then I'm going to grab the rest of the article. And I'm going to paste that in as well. There are cases where formatting may be an issue. Formatting from uh, Word uh, will be picked up and it may make your article look a little funny. In that case, if you find you're running into that problem, when you paste it in, click on this little um, clipboard here, drop it in and you can place it as plain text. Uh, I did not do that at this point because I know that this is going to work fine and I wanted to include all of the links that were put into the article by my writers. So let's start with the very first thing here. When, when dropping the, the, the information into your blog, you always want to start with a sentence that is a reiteration of what this blog is about. In this case, we have the sentence right here. It has Squarespace, which is our keyword. The title also has Squarespace. And for search engine optimization purposes, we want Squarespace embedded at approximately a 1.5% insertion rate. So I've dropped um, the term Squarespace, or asked my writers to, to drop this in throughout the article nine times. So a 600-word blog, 1.5% insertion rate, it goes in nine times. This first sentence, we want to make that what is called an H2 tag. So I'm selecting the sentence, I go up here, and I click H2. This helps Google understand what this article is about. And when creating a blog, we want to have a series of H1, H2, and H3 tags. Your title is going to be your H1. The next sentence in your article should be an H2. And then information, subcategories throughout the blog should be H3 categories and titles. It's also a good best practice to include uh, bolded sections and links out to other pages within your website. So the way that we do that is simply we can select a word, click on link. This window opens up and we have three options. One, we can link to the content on our site. So any page that is on your site. If it's a blog page, uh, my recommendation is to open a new window with your live site, find the blog, select that URL, and drop it in as an external file. External is also for, say, third-party uh, uh, websites that are confirming the information, so non-competing websites that confirm what you're trying to say in the article. The last section here is files. If we wanted something to be able to be downloads, loaded, say a PDF, we could click on files and just add a file here simply by dropping it in. A good best practice when adding a file for download is to have it open in a new window. But in this case, we're just gonna keep it um, as a link here. I'll show you if I click on it. Here's a link here. If I click on edit, I can see that link. And this link is to a blog that I've written. So we're dropping it in, and I want people to be able to read my blog about WordPress. Okay, so we've created our H1, H2, and H3 tags throughout. We've added some bolded areas. In this case, I've also used numbers because I want to break up the content somewhat. 
Uh, you want to allow them to skim that blog, get the most information they can out of it, and then make a determination as to whether to read the blog or not. Okay, so the next step is to drop in an image, at least one image. You have to be careful about the numbers of images that you drop within your blog because the, the more images you add, the longer it takes that page to load. And speed is a determination as to whether your website or a blog article is going to be seen online in search engines. So in this case, I have an image created. It's a graphic that I've created in Canva. And I'm going to open up by clicking this insertion button here. We'll do that again. And I'll grab image. And wherever that line shows up, it's actually where the image is going to wind up in your page. So in this case, I want it in the upper left-hand corner within the content. So I release that. And here is where I'm going to drag, drag my image. So I have an image here on my desktop. Get rid of this. And I'll drag my image over. And it will automatically load. Now, whether you want a caption or not, you should always include a caption and then determine whether or not you want it to be seen. So in this case, it's another opportunity to get the keyword Squarespace in there. So I'll add that right now. So there's my caption, but I don't really want it to be seen. It's really just a reiteration of what the what is being said in this image. So I'm going to choose caption below and click on do not display caption. So the caption does not show up. If I wanted this image to be opened up in a light box, I would click here and it would just open up as a full page on a light box within your blog. If I want to click through to another article, or another page, a file, or to an external website, I would click here and then add that information, much like we did when we selected and created a link within the page. In this case, I don't want to do that. So I'm finished here. I've got my image file name, and it's important, if I click on the image, it's important to title your images before you put them within your site. Nobody has ever searched for uh, DCS1654 or whatever your camera it gives for a code for the particular image. So make sure that you retitle your images, including keywords within that image, and drop it within the, and, and that way when you drop it within this, within the, the web article, this name will automatically show up as the title of that image. This is important. People are using image search more and more, and this will help you get found online. So I click apply. We now have our image there. Next thing I like to do is to include a call to action. I want people who are reading this blog to take a next step. In this case, I'm going to drop a call to action in the footer of this blog article. And that call to action is really just a button. And I've created a graphic image to work as a button. So let me show you how that works. So I click on the insertion tab. I click on image, I grab my call to action and drag it into the box. Once again, I'm going to title that image. And I'm not going to display that caption. Okay. We now have our call to action at the bottom of the article. It's not being displayed. I don't want to stretch it or use a light box, though if your call to action is smaller than the width of your article, you may want to click stretch and it will make it run the width of the article. And because it's a call to action, they have to go to another page. So in here, I'm clicking on the area to add the link. I'll click on content and then I'll choose the page that I want it to go to. In this case, creating a land page, landing page on Squarespace. So I click on that, I hit apply, and now this whole image is linked to the landing page that I've created. 
The next step is to add tags and categories. Categories are broader terms that help people understand what this article is about. So think of it as a general term for what your articles are about. Tags are going to be more specific. So in this case, I'm going to click on categories. And these are categories that I've previously set up. In this case, I'm going to click on websites. But if I needed to create a new category, I could click on this button and just write it in. But websites is what this is about. So I'm clicking on websites and category websites shows up below. Now for tags, the list doesn't show up. So you have to actually start to type in what this article is about. So in this case, I'm going to put in Squarespace and I click on Squarespace and the tag shows up for Squarespace. Try not to put too many tags in here or too many categories for it defeats the purpose for using these the tags and categories to find us the specific information a person wants to see. So now that the tags and categories are done, I'm going to go up to the top of my page. And the next step is to click on options. First thing you want to do is to choose uh, the author who is writing this blog. I have a series of writers that write for me. And in my case, it's my blog. So I'm just going to leave this in my name. The next thing I'm going to do is add another image. This is an image that will be used by social media. I'm going to use the same image that I dropped into the blog article in this spot here. Now I use square images within my articles and in this thumbnail image area because I find that they work quite nicely on Twitter uh, when sharing articles. The next thing you want to do is to put in an excerpt. This is going to be the metadata for your blog. It's extremely important. You should do this with every single blog that you write. In many cases, I'll simply grab the first sentence that I created for the blog article, place it in the options area under excerpt. It's showing as an H2 tag, but I'm going to just delete it uh, delete the formatting so that it winds up just a regular normal format by clicking this little circle here that's removes that removes format. So there we go. We have building a website on Squarespace can take six to eight weeks with a plan and the right designer. And I'll add a bit of a call to action at the end of this. Try to keep this sentence 156 characters. That is what Google recommends. That is what we tried to do. Okay. If we wanted to make this a featured post, we could click here. This would allow it to show up in certain areas, say sidebars or wherever you have a summary on the website. The next step is to add location. You can drop this in here, but as you can see from this map, this actually shows my current location. So I'm just going to leave this alone. Lastly, we have social media buttons. When we publish the article, we want it to be published out to social media platforms as well. And as you can see, I have my Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, Pinterest, as well as my um, company Facebook page. So I'm just going to turn all of these on. Okay. Well, now that that's done, I'll go back to content. Just review your site, your, your uh, article quickly. Everything looks fine to me. We have series of links. We have our call to action. We have bolded uh, type. We also have our H3 tags, our H2 tag, and our H1 tag here for the title. The next thing to do is to click on the draft area. Now we have four options here. We can publish it immediately or we can schedule this to go out in the future. You also have the option of, of reviewing it or marking this post for review. It'll show up in the sidebar over here under review so that if somebody needs to look at this before it gets published, 
they can see all of the ones that are ready to go and click on review and edit those or read them and make sure that they are actually ready to be published. I like to create a lot of blogs all at once and then schedule them out over time. So I'm going to click scheduled. So when you click scheduled, it says it's going to go out today at 8.50 a.m. That's when I'm actually creating this video. So I click on that, a calendar opens up and I can schedule it into the future. So I'm gonna schedule it for Tuesday the 31st and I'm going to change the time to 10 a.m. It's 41 days away from now. That's it. So now I'll hit save and the article shows up here as scheduled. If I want to look at all of my scheduled articles, I can click here. There is my scheduled article that I just created. If I want to, to look at articles that need to be reviewed, I would click here. Drafts, I would click here. And then all shows all of the articles all at once. I hope this was helpful. If you do run into trouble, you can always schedule me on my website. I'd be happy to spend an hour with you to just go over this once more. Thank you.